and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for a new deck, another donation deck. We got Encroaching Fortune. So what we're going to be trying here is a um, ephemeral based Shadow Isles aggro deck um, with our Shark Chariots and everything um, with Miss Fortune helping out our aggro units, being able to get that extra damage in and make it even more difficult for our opponents to block. And, of course, going with Encroaching Shadows. That's our Encroaching Par. We're going to be trying out this brand new card. Grant all allies in deck in hand. Plus two, plus two, and Ephemeral. Um, and, so, you know, like we're, we're going to be trying this out with Misfortune, trying to be really aggressive. We still have some pretty good top-end cards. Of course, Hecarim uh, loves having all these Ephemeral units attack. So we have Hecarim. And then even if, if Hecarim's Ephemeral, it can die. We can play Rekindler, bring back Hecarim. They'll live, and of course, harrowing, and we do want to have like some Hecarim's die with harrowing also. Uh, to go along with Encroaching Shadows, uh, that has all of our units be ephemeral anyway, we're going to have Oblivious Islander that can you know grant an ally ephemeral, which they'll already have. So basically, we can just play Oblivious Islander and reduce the cost of um, an ally in hand by one. Stygian Onlooker, I think, could be awesome in this deck of. A little bit later on in the game, maybe turn four, turn five, something like that. We can try to get multiple onlookers. Maybe they are, uh, if we have like the encroaching shadows where they're plus two, plus two and ephemeral. Um, whenever we play them with nightfall, they'll get the plus two also. So they will be six power with fearsome for one mana. If we can play multiple of these onlookers with the help of like stalking shadows. Maybe that gives us a couple onlookers or we can fading memories, get another onlooker. We can get a whole bunch of uh, large units for like one turn um you know on like a turn four like i said like we could play like oblivious islander uh let's say let's say we had stalking shadows and we got two onlookers and then uh, we have like a fading memories we can go like islander to turn to start um and then you know we can play like double onlooker from the sh from what we got with the shadows and fading memories play another one we could have like three onlookers there attacking on turn four and of course, Fading Memories, Oblivious Islander, those cards are amazing with Shark Chariots as well. So this will be interesting to see how this will go. Of course, you know, we're just, um, what cancel, wanted to go to the Cursed Ruins. We're just trying out, um, you know, trying out this brand new card, Encroaching Shadow, seeing if we can find a way to use this and seeing if our deck can be aggressive enough. We're not going to be blocking too well. Um... So, you know, like, that's going to be something that, that will be the case. Don't want any of these. All right, a little bit better. So, we'll have the attack token on turn two. So, nothing turn one. And now we can go Stalking Shadows. Let's take... Um, do I want two Petty Officers or two Warden's Preys? One of these two. Maybe two Petty Officers. Petty Officer, of course, is a lot better than Warden's Prey, but Petty Officer costs three, which is what we are looking at with our, our other cards in hand as well, which is like the downside of taking the Petty Officer. Wow. Lots of misfortunes. Ooh. Bark Beast is an interesting one. Favors the 
We're right, gonna get another onlooker. There'll be the four one fearsome that attacks first. It's gonna die. It's gonna turn the bark beast into a three three. Actually, and I think I attack with misfortune as well. Since we will have, well, we have other misfortunes that we can play. Uh, instead of, you know, my opponent's going to be blocking with the 4 3 instead of letting them block on, like, these other things anyway. Yeah, let's clear the board, do a lot of damage to them. Alright, got a good 7 damage in that turn. Only attacked with the one ephemeral so far. There you are. Mm. if you work, burn if you don't. <laughs> Keeps them from attacking with those other things. Oh, I, I don't know why I didn't play the Nimble Boro. I should have. Carved from the savage cold. Rude. Our next attack turn is going to be pretty good. I'm one of the good guys, but not that good. What does he want from me? I see when I played like this blighted caretaker first. Good, I need I need something to die. I wanna go home. I'm down to eleven. Maybe I just block these things. We'll see. We'll see what they have. I'm planning on the caretaker challenge, you know, the caretaker with this here. Everyone's a garden. Man, I wish I could just keep playing more things to be attacking with. Don't have room. That brings along two attackers. Hmm. 
be nice to play the Shark Chariot. But I don't think I give them just... I don't think it's, like, Shark Chariot's enough of an upgrade over the Blighted Caretaker to give them the ability to play another blocker, basically. I don't think it's an enough, enough of an upgrade. To let them play something. Okay, so bad news, I don't get to kill the thing that's going to keep them from drawing cards, but the good news is we're doing damage to the Escaped Abomination and the Ravenous Butcher, so between that damage and the Love Tap, those will both die before combat, so it's not going to be doing any damage to the Hecarim and Love our Escaped you. Abomination, we're going to keep them both of those alive. That's the good news. That Stalking Shadows is awesome in this deck for them. You know, especially when you're trying to find... Um, trying to find a card like... Uh, like They Who Endure. And just lets you. Yeah, that Stalking Shadows is a really nice upgrade. You know, and uh, as we can see here with the Neverglade Collector, too. That's a really nice upgrade for them. With the new set. So what's surviving here seems very unlikely. Three health is the most health I have. I guess this puts me to one. No, a block no, like no, that, no, we go to two. Well I went to Fading Memories, this Neverglade Collector. Yeah, because I can't, I can't kill my own things. Um, yeah, nothing I can do about that. Yeah, Leona Trun Trundle, definitely viable deck. That was a, a real interesting one that we learned a lot from. That, that deck was a lot better than the record shows. I think it has a lot more potential going forward, too. Good game, super close. I think early on, it. I don't know, early on, it's just, it is good to just be learning and trying out all this new stuff instead of just focusing on trying to win at all costs whenever we have all these new cards. I keep him Blighted Caretaker. Yeah, this is a nice fill deck. This is a, this is a spicy one. I keep him Blighted Caretaker. I'm not sure, like, Encroaching Shadows. Am I supposed to be keeping that in the opener? Maybe I am. Maybe I should just be keeping Encroaching Shadows in the opener right now just so we can kind of learn more about it. If I had, if I had like one or two cards early that we were going to be able to play, it'd make it a lot easier casting that, keeping that encroaching shadows as well. So like if I knew it, we were going to have a couple early drops either way. Curse Keeper is a pretty decent one to fading memories. Spilled paint is just accidental art. Like this. Yeah, mm -hmm. could could be going Wraith Caller instead of Petty Officer. That's true. 
want a card that can put multiple bodies into play. Um, you know, like with, with one, one body being ephemeral. I'm not sure if I want to Fading Memories the Curse Keeper or not. That's what I'm kind of debating on. Obviously, we're going to Blight a Caretaker it. It's just, do we want another one after that? So if I Blight a Caretaker this, that takes up my entire board. So I don't get to play this other stuff. I'm gonna just hold on to the fading memories instead of using it here on the curse keeper. That's not good for me. <sighs> Any of these things? Fading memories? Yeah, that was sad. Stole the rations, shackle the prisoners. Bow to your king. Just leave me alone. Oh, we got caustic cask. So I can play the oblivious islander and just do it on the caustic cask. And I could just get the Oblivious Islander in play. Um, yeah, might as well. And I think we're going to have plenty of mana. I was just thinking about that card. Like with the spell mana. Just think about that one. Rude. 
cool. I'm glad we never use this fading memories. I do like fading memories on a Stygian onlooker. Good. That's gonna kind of be the plan. Probably is. Oh yeah. All right, that's definitely the plan. Um. Yeah, I can't cast the fading memories first, unfortunately. I mean, I could. On what? Crackshot Corsair? No, because I just want onlookers. I'm obviously hoping they don't have another avalanche or anything like that. I guess they avalanche wouldn't really work. Um, the three damage thing from Trundle. I still have the ability to empty our hand, even if they do have that three damage thing. Okay. That's fine. Dang, I wish this was the sparring student instead of the astute academic. They just avalanched away four of my units. <laughs> Encroaching shadows. I make shepherding look easy. Okay, well. We will have attack. Attack. I'll go to pieces. Let's test my theorem. Alright, here we go. Another obstacle. Hopefully, GG's. Hopefully. That's still nine. All right, there we go. Look at encroaching shadows. They had so much defense that turn. Whoops. Wrong way. That was pretty awesome. Those onlookers were good. Alright, our deck did its thing. That was pretty awesome. So yeah, we got to... Um, yeah, we got to play all of those six power Stygian onlookers, even though they, so that turn they played, they played an 08 for a blocker and they played an avalanche and killed four of our units and they played a 27 for a blocker and they played a combat trick. They did all of that, that turn. And we still dealt nine damage to him and killed him. So yeah, so they still had, and we yes, we 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 would have dealt ten. The turn would have ended. So we still dealt fifty percent of their damage, their life total, through all of that. Pretty awesome. All right, so we have the attack token on the even turns. Um. So we 
have the attack token on the even turns. If we had the attack token on the odd turns, I'd go like, I would like the Islander Hecarim and then probably, keep, you know, rekindle or bring it back kind of thing. This would have been a great hand to have Curse Keeper, where I could have gone Islander on turn 1 and give Curse Keeper the 1-1 one, one and Ephemeral, and then turn 2 we could have played 1 mana Curse Keeper and then Onlooker. That's what I was really hoping for with our Mulligan, was that we would grab a Curse Keeper. Um, but I guess I'm just going to make Hecarim Ephemeral. I guess... So they do have an A plus cost card. Let me smell something. Would have rather made you. Fortune favors the bold. Would have rather made you the ephemeral the previous turn instead of my Hecarim. Now we go. Draw two different dragons. Huh. Interesting. at all. They ain't scared. I think I have the minus two, plus two thing. I sure hope. Sure hope this works out. No, make it rain, what are you doing? Rain, what are you doing? All right, what are we going to Fading Memories? I guess next turn I have six mana. I can go Onlooker to play more things. With Onlooker, I could go... Or Islander, I can go Islander, Warden's Prey, Hecarim. Yeah, I think we do all of that. I want to get this thing out of here. All right, sorry. It's, diff it's not easy to play, especially you know, just with all these new cards of. of and how this is going to work out. Alright, Encroaching Shadows, help us out. It's 
So this thing would have five health either way, whether it was, you know, six five or five five. Oh man, that's exactly what I need, I think. Fresh catch. Well, it was fresh. Oh, they're gonna have ice quake. I should have led with Hecker. I'm not, not the onlooker. Please no ice quake. Just let me attack. All right, that's fine. Okay, so attack with all this stuff. Keep our two one. This is gonna be stunned anyway. Yeah, I mean it's it's all about this attack anyway. Like this is this attack's got to kill him, and so this is. This is how we're attacking for the most damage. All right, well, this attack's not going to kill him, but clears out everything. I got a two one left. Alright, we gotta find three damage in here. That's a good way to find three damage. They pass to me. Basically because of Daybreak, I didn't really want to play Rekindler right then because of Daybreak, I want to be able to attack with Rekindler. Alright, GG's. Encroaching Shadows. Two and one, we've played Encroaching Shadows twice, we have won both of those games. Coincidence? I think not. All right, our, our Encroaching Fortune deck doing pretty good here. Doing real good. Um, ooh, this is a pretty nice looking hand. Hello, Sand Trap. Order from here. I think I would need this warden's prey for caretaker, which is why I'm not offering the trade. And plus, it's, it's good to not trade with Avaros and Sentry until later, anyway. Oh no, we don't get this this playability. That would have been really nice. Um, Oblivious Islander making the Shark Chariot cost one mana, so that next turn on turn four I could go Shark Chariot, Caretaker, kill the Shark Chariot. And so on. Ooh. That's interesting. This is just the best play right now. Our Warden's Praise have been really creating these 
I've been doing creating these caustic casks a bunch. Casks. Uh, let's see. So we are going to attack. We are going to challenge, challenge. They can have three, three block one of these two ones. Do you want to get back to work? That's okay. Next turn we could go like Shark Chariot and Encroaching Shadows. Like what does... Does Shark Chariot keep... Like I don't know if Shark Chariot's gonna continue to be a 5-3 with Encroaching Shadows. I don't think it is. I think it comes back as a 3-1, even if we buff it up. I think it'll just come back and be a this thing to block the 6-6. Six, six. So Hecarim is our card that has the highest upside, for sure. As far as playing it goes. Now... <sighs> hmm. Do I have to be worried about some Frostbite? I guess we don't need to be that worried about Frostbite. Oh, hello there. Let's play this Islander first. It's also another Ephemeral. Hacker will bring four attackers alongside with it. And so the Islander would be... So that'd be five total. But like if they have Frostbite plus Culling Strike, right, that's kind of a problem. If I would have just gone Hecarim, they go Frostbite, Culling Strike, and kill it. So now by playing the Oblivious Islander first, if they go Frostbite, Culling Strike, kill Hecarim, we can at least attack with the Islander and bring the Sharks back. The War Mother will unite us all. Okay. We want all of the other attackers on the left of Hecarim because we want them attacking and dying before Hecarim dies. But we don't get that that choice. Like these, so we we can at least put one thing in Hecarim. If you are attacking with a bunch of things with Hecarim, try to get Hecarim as far to the right as possible, because once, especially with Hecarim being ephemeral like this, once Hecarim dies, then we're gonna lose all of those buffs from those other things. All right, GGs, we are now three and one over in ranked with Encroaching Fortune. All right. And then, yeah, so then, yep, even if that wouldn't have worked out, I agree with you, Say Maul. We were, I think we we're going to be able to survive um, my opponent's next turn just fine, and then we would be able to harrowing. Okay.
Hmm. I guess we'll keep a Cursed Keeper. We don't have the payoffs yet. This is not a great Onlooker. I just have the Attack Token. If we didn't have the Attack Token, I would not be playing Onlooker. But we have the Attack Token. I'm really glad they didn't have Omen Hawk. Right, I would have felt bad if I got kind of wasted this onlooker and then they went omen hawk okay um interesting Shark Chariot. Um, I do not know if they removed sea monsters from the expedition. Um, I would... Whatever they did would be in the patch notes. So check, that's the website with the patch notes. Playroomterra.com slash news. Um, and so you can check the patch notes in there. Because whatever they did, that's where it will be. If I play the Misfortune, I'm not going to have the ability to play Encroaching Shadows. Or I just play Encroaching Shadows and pump these things up plus two. Now, that doesn't really no even pay. help no pay. right now if we're going to just kill the Curse Keeper oh, anyway. Um, sure, you do your whole kill him dead thing. It's like four. Kind of amazing how many avalanche decks that we have been playing against and how we're still doing fairly well Everyone's a garden. speaking of Yeah, our concept's working out pretty well. Definitely. Um, it'll, it would be working out better if every opponent didn't have Avalanche. But every opponent we're playing against has Avalanche. keeping everybody from attacking and uh, that's good
Do you want to get back? Double back for the next kill! <laughs> you got a problem? Yeah, they're they're ramping a little bit more than I was ramping. They got the house spiders. The Swain Trundle that I played earlier. Prepare the cargo! There is no excess when Tiktok is at stake. They had a great hand for that deck. You know, both champions, their Leviathan, that that uh, avalanche was perfect. And then, you know, the house spiders and weirding stones, the two house spiders. Yeah, great hand. Yeah, I guess that that's kind of, you know, playing house spider and avalanche together. I don't know, I guess it works. It's It's just more, you know, more early defense. I guess that's yeah, I guess that works. But anyway, there we go. Encroaching Fortune. Still a 3-2. Pretty awesome. We'll take that for our first try at Encroaching Shadows. You know, combining it there with the Misfortune. Um, and this this deck has a lot of things that can make extra bodies, as we saw with the Warden's Prey and Curse Keeper and stuff like that. And, and then also with the Petty Officer. We have like these kind of cards, Rekindler. They make an extra body so that even if they are ephemeral and they die... Um, they still leave behind stuff, so that's kind of the the thinking of going with bilge water with that. Same with the vile feast, how it leaves behind a spiraling for you. Um, Stalking shadows is amazing. This card is really good. This is a card we didn't have. We didn't draw this card hardly ever, but it is amazing. It was really good with the Stygian onlooker. Um, but a pretty cool little deck here. Pretty cool deck. All right, so there's our first encroaching. Uh, Shadows deck. Those y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And feel free to leave those comments, anything about um, Encroaching Shadows, if you got other other options for it, anything else you were doing with that card. Um, you know, anything about the format, any decks that you really like, all that kind of stuff. I love seeing those comments. Alright, thank you so much for watching, though, and I'll see you for the next video.